This afternoon we're going to make uh, some half urns. Um, I have a customer who wants an urn about two inches tall and about uh, an inch or so wide and uh, she wants them in half urns so that they look like this. Um, they're going to be put down on a glued to a sign of various sorts. I don't know what what ultimate uh, goal is but that's those are the instructions that you gave me anyways. Uh, so what I thought we would do is cut these out as a compound cut from the uh, little pattern that I made up. I took her uh, picture of the urn and I made it into a pattern which can now be uh, fastened to this block of wood. So what we have to do first is cut out the pattern. I think we can do that fairly easily. These are <clears throat> one and a half inch, one and a half inch. And I took a piece of uh, <clears throat> plywood and cut it, which comes out pretty much to a one and a half inch thickness, and cut the other side to one and a half. So we've got a nice little square for that purpose. I'll show you how I cut these up in a little while. But uh, what we want to do is cut out this pattern right now so that we can fit it down to the actual block of wood. Okay, I'm going to cut all the way around it. <clears throat> I made the block of wood about four and a half inches long so that I have a little bit of area to hold it when I'm doing my cutting. Uh, what we're going to do now is tape this down and then take it over to the scroll saw and uh, do some work on it. Okay, I'm going to be uh, <clears throat> using these to cut the uh, urns out of. Um, they're one and a half inch by one and a half inch square, and they're about uh, four and a half, five inches long, so I'll have enough room to uh, be able to hold on to the piece while I'm cutting it out. Uh, this is all cut from two by four, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over now to the sander and sand down all the sides so that they're nice and smooth. Not that it really matters because uh, the actual piece that's going to be used is inside the block, but it'll be easier to uh, move around on the table. All right. Set so that uh, we can attach our pattern and start cutting on the scroll saw. So let's go attach the pattern to this now. Okay, I've used the uh, a glue stick to gum up the back of this thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our urn pattern and place it so that the seam in the middle is right on the, the corner on the right hand side. It ought to fit nicely across the block if you cut it properly. It's one and a half inches. So that'll be nicely put on there like that. You flip it over and do the other side. Okay. Make sure it's down nice and pat. You don't have to worry about using tape on this because uh, we're using... Uh, number nine blade I believe it is 
and um, this is a very soft wood so it should be able to cut with no problem at all. I want to take this over to the drill press and drill a couple of entry holes for the uh, urn. Okay we're over at the drill press now. We've got our pattern set on the block. What we have to do is drill a couple of entry holes, one on each side uh, of uh, each of the urns so that we can get our scroll saw blade in there. So we're going to go, we've got a uh, probably about a sixteenth of an inch blade, uh, drill on there and long enough to go through the block. Okay, those came out pretty good. Just drill them a little bit up near the uh, edge of the urn and we'll be able to insert our blades in there for cutting purposes. Alright, so let's go to the scroll saw now and do some work on this thing. Alright, we're going to cut out the urn from this block now. And I'm going to try to keep my hands out of the way, do the best I can so you'll be able to see what's going on here but it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to take the, uh, we've got a nine inch reverse blade in here. <clears throat> I'm going to pop it up through there, bring it down, tighten down our blade, go over to the side so I can reach it. Okay, I'll put the uh, power, the speed at maybe about half speed. I don't think we really need to have it uh, fully speeding it up. And now we'll try cutting this. See how we do. Just take your time. Move slowly. Don't put a lot of pressure on the blade. Let the blade do the cutting. Okay. <clears throat> We've made our first cut here now. Let me just make sure that this is still in focus. Yeah. Okay, the uh, first cut is just a preliminary one. We've got the outline done on one side. Now what we have to do is actually what we want to do is go and tape this up here. We're going to put a piece of tape right across there and across the back so that this thing doesn't fall out while we're doing our next cut. So I'm going to go do that now. Okay, I went to the bench there and taped up using clear box tape uh, just right over the top of that and along the back just to make sure that it doesn't fall out when I'm doing my next cut. Well, the next cut is going to be the other side. Put our blade in through the bottom. Slide it up there. Once again, we fasten our blade down. Make sure it's nice and secure. And we are now ready to start our second cut. <clears throat> okay, once again, I'll try to keep my hand out of the way. Okay, we have this other one cut out now. 
take this back to the bench now and we'll see if we can pop this thing out of here take a look at what it looks like all right we're over at the bench again and we want to now peel off the tape that we put on here sometimes this is the hardest thing to do get tape off so we want to knock out all the pieces at this point we're going to start by taking these end pieces off where there isn't any tape actually they'll just drop right out the other one where the tape was a little more difficult peel that off here hopefully I'm one side is usually better than the other. Okay, there we go. We got it out. All right, standing it up here so you can see it. There's our finished vase. And uh, you can see it looks pretty good. Actually, we call it a vase. It's actually an urn. But um, we get around a little bit here. You can see how it came out. All right, now, the customer <clears throat> doesn't want an actual urn. She wants a half an urn. She's going to use it as part of a display that she's going to glue them to. But in order to make it look like an urn, you have to have a, a hole in the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Forstner bit to put a hole partway down into the vase, into the urn itself, uh, before we actually cut it in half. We're going to use the uh, original framework to do the cutting in half. So let's go over to the uh, drill press now and see if we can... Well, before we do that, actually, <clears throat> before we go to the drill press, we want to mark off the center on this uh, urn. What we're going to do is we'll just take a pencil and crisscross the ruler here. that one side <clears throat> it's on the other side okay we've got roughly our center that we're going to need to drill on so here we go okay we're at the uh, <clears throat> drill press now and then the drill press vise I've locked down the uh, urn so that the uh, Forstner bit, 3 8 inch Forstner bit, comes right down on the center there. And what we're going to do is we're going to drill a nice hole there to make it look like the top of the vase is open. Let's hope we can do this without cracking the wood. Sometimes it does happen. Okay, we went down about a half an inch there. I think maybe we'll go a little, a little deeper. Okay. I think we've accomplished what we needed to do here. This looks like a real urn now. With a uh, hole in the top. In case we wanted to put something in there, which of course we're not going to, but um, now we're ready to cut this thing in half so we can make two uh, pieces that the customer wants. Okay, we put the vase back, uh, the urn, I keep saying that, we put the urn back inside of the block where we cut it originally, and I put all the pieces together like that hold it in place that really doesn't that broke off a little bit that doesn't really matter uh, that's going to be thrown out anyways now what we need to do is figure the center of the vase as best as possible and draw a line right up through it 
where we're going to do our cut. Put that down like that. And we'll just draw a crazy little line there. And we'll put some tape on here. <clears throat> Make sure it holds in place when we do our actual cutting. Just go around the outside here. That'll hold the vase inside, or the urn inside, so that it won't uh, move around too much when we're making our cut on the bandsaw. We're going to slip this right down the middle. Okay. All right, let's try this now and see if we can do it. We're going to try to slice it right down the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect because that's going to be, could be sanded down later on, uh, the cut section, and it's going to be glued down with the back side facing uh, the project anyway, so it won't really matter if you're a little bit off. bench and see what this thing looks like. Well, let's hope for the best on this now. We sliced it down the middle. We crack it open here like this. We should have two nice half vases half urns. Someday I'm going to remember not to say vase. Okay, and here they are. Now these are going to be glued down, as I said, on some particular project the customer has in mind. Perhaps even painted up and decorated in some way. All we have to do now is uh, sand them down a little bit, make them look a little more decent than they are right now. Okay, I'm going to try dangerously sanding these on my wheel very, very gently. Got to be sure you grip those very carefully when you uh, <clears throat> work them because uh, they're very fragile and it could break very easily. The idea is just to smooth, get the smooth uh, fuzzies off and smooth out the edges of the vase as much as possible. I'm going to take the other sander, my belt sander, probably sand the tops down a little bit flatter than they are now too. Make them look uh, a little better than they do at the moment.